Okay, so real numbers, part two, chapter one, lesson three. So the first thing that I want to talk about are what are real numbers? So we're going to kind of make like a flow chart here. So if towards the middle of your paper, you can put real. Real numbers, and there, there are such things as imaginary numbers, which you're not going to learn about until high school, maybe not even until college. So real numbers would include rational numbers and irrational numbers. So every number that you can think of is a real number. And then they can be separated into two categories, either rational or irrational. Rational numbers also kind of have some categories or subsets as it's sometimes termed underneath them. So not all rational numbers are these things, but some are. So some are considered integers. Now integers are your positive and negative numbers, but they don't include any decimals or fractions. So they'd be things that you'd see like on a number line, like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, et cetera. It's an infinite amount of numbers, but again, no fractions, no decimals. So again, not all rational numbers fall into that category. There are numbers that are decimals and fractions that fall into the category. And we'll talk more specifically about those in a second. Another subset then, all integers, or all of these numbers would fall into integers. So some integers would also be considered whole numbers. Now, whole numbers are the numbers that you count with, like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And to get even more detailed than that, the numbers when you were like two years old, maybe even one year old for some of you, when you were first learning how to count, you didn't ever use the 0. You just started with 1. Those are called natural numbers. So again, the only difference with a natural number and a whole number is that natural numbers don't include that one. Oh, sorry, zero, 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 that one number, zero. Sorry, thank you. So all natural numbers are whole numbers. All natural numbers are integers. All natural numbers are rational. All natural numbers are real, okay? So if I wanted to explain what are the subsets of the number five, I could say that the number five is real, it's rational, it's an integer, it's a whole number, it's a natural number. So there's lots of different categories that the number five comes into. However, if I wanted to say, what are the subsets of negative four? I would say negative four is real, it's rational, and it's an integer. It is not these things. Negative four is not whole or natural. If I want to say one-fourth, now we're going to talk in a second more about these rational numbers, one-fourth would be real and rational, but it's not in these categories, okay? So you're going to have to do that, and we'll practice a little bit more of that in just a second. All right, everyone have this part? All right, so let's talk a little bit more in detail about what is rational and what is irrational. So we just said rational would include integers, whole numbers, natural numbers. So integers, whole, natural. Rational numbers would also include all fractions. All fractions. It doesn't matter if the fraction is positive or negative. If the fraction is improper, simplified, a mixed number, if it looks like a fraction, it is rational, okay? And that's why I have all in caps. It's important. It includes perfect squares. Perfect squares. 
some of you found underneath your chairs today when you came in a, a green piece of paper and it had square roots on it. It was from another class that people left it when they shouldn't have. Perfect squares. Perfect squares would be like the square root of 9, the square root of 16, the square root of 25. What, what are perfect squares, would you say? What, if you gave it like a definition of it, what would you say? Number times itself. So 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5. So then square root of 36, square root of 49, square root of 64, square root of 81. Those are all perfect squares. Perfect squares are rational, okay? And then we have some decimals, not all decimals. So these are the types of decimals. Repeating decimals are rational. Again, repeating decimals are rational. And we all know that you can either write a repeating decimal like 0 0.333 dot, dot, dot. And those dots mean that it keeps going. But we can see what's coming next. Or we could write it 0 0.3 with a line over the 3. Because the 3 is what's repeating. We wouldn't want to write 0 0.33 repeating. Or 333 repeating. It's just 1, 3. Because uh, it's not like it's not the simplified way to write it. If it was one two one two one two, then you'd write the one and the two. Yes, yes. You want to have what's underlined is the thing that's repeating. Yes. So the last type of decimal would be considered a terminating decimal. Terminating decimal. So the word terminate, there's a movie called the Terminator. There are exterminators. What do exterminators do? Kill bugs and rodents and all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, what if your job is terminated? You're, you're fired. If your job is terminated, you're fired. So if we were going to use one word in place of the word terminate that would fit all of those examples, it would be the word stop. Okay? The terminator stopped the bad guys. Exterminator stopped the bugs and everything. If your job is terminated, it stopped. <laughs> okay? So terminating decimals were things that you were the most familiar with when um, you first started learning about decimals, like 0 0.125. There's nothing after the five. There's not the dot, dot, dot. Okay? So again, all of those things are rational. Integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, all fractions, perfect squares, repeating decimals, and terminating decimals. If it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Okay? It can be positive or negative and still be considered rational. So you may be thinking, well, what would even be left? What's possible that's irrational then? I, you might not be able to even think of something right now. That would be irrational. So let's talk about that. And the list is much, much, much smaller. So again, this is irrational. So I'm going to put two things for this. First, decimals that don't stop or repeat. Very good. Thank you. Decimals that don't stop or repeat. Sam, was that you that said like pi? Good job. So pi is the most infamous irrational number there is. So pi can be used with this symbol. Depending on the font, just like you know how there's different fonts on the computer, right? Depending on the font, sometimes it can look really squared off. So just be prepared that it might look a little bit different. Um, depending on what font they're using, all right? But it should kind of look like that. How do you spell pi? P-I. P -I. P -I. It's, not, it's not apple pie. It's just a P-I. Now, pi, you use pi when you're finding, like, the area of a circle, the circumference of a circle. You use the number pi. And we normally use 3.14. But that's an estimation of pi. 
pi really keeps going. 3.14159 dot dot dot. Now some people, for whatever reason, they really enjoy memorizing things and they want to see how many numbers of pi they can memorize. So there's really no reason for you to ever do that unless it's just something that would make you happy yourself. So I had a, uh, a student a couple of years ago that her passcode on her phone was pi and it was like she had like 20 digits for her passcode. Who would, who would want to put that in every time? I don't know, but she did. So. so there are other decimal numbers that don't stop and don't repeat. So you're looking for the dot, dot, dot. But we don't always want to just say, oh, if I see dot, 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 it means that it's irrational. Because remember, we can use that also for repeating. So if, but if you... If you see a decimal and you don't know what's coming next, then it's irrational. That's like the definition of irrational. If someone is acting irrational, they're acting crazy. They're being unexpected. You don't know what they're going to do next. Just like this decimal. Unless you have it memorized for pi, I don't know what's coming after that nine. Okay? Sam? Later on, you can. All right. So the other thing that I want to say is not a perfect square. not a perfect square. For instance, the square root of 7. The square root of 7, if you do it in a calculator, why don't you try it in a calculator right now? Huh. So it fills up your entire screen, right? Now, your screen is only so big, so obviously it's going to have to stop. But as you can see, it doesn't repeat. It is a decimal that doesn't stop or repeat. Okay? So any not, whenever it's not a perfect square, it's always going to be irrational. Okay? But we're going to want to use our calculators to help us when we have to compare and stuff. Now, my other classes today, like my regular 7th grade level class, they're not allowed to use a calculator on the first test. So I had to teach them how to estimate that by looking at perfect squares. So think about the perfect squares. Like, you know, the square root of 4 is perfect and the square root of 9 is perfect. Like, that would come in between them. So this equals 3. Sorry, that equals 2. <laughs> and that equals 3. So we know it comes in between 2 and 3. That's how you would estimate it. Think about which two perfect squares it's in between. And since 7 is closer to 9, it'd be closer to 3. It'd be a little bit more than 2.5. All right. So what we're going to do now for the rest of the time, for the rest of the, actually, let's classify some things. Let's classify. And what I mean by classify, we're looking for those subsets. Let's do two-thirds. If you don't have room, then you're going to turn the page because there's more we're doing today. Two-thirds. So we know it's real. Everything we're talking about is real. Is two-thirds rational or irrational? Rational. Is it an integer? No integers can be fractions. So if it's not an integer, it can't be whole number or natural number either. So that's all we have to do. We're done. How about one? So first of all, is it rational or irrational? Rational. Is it an integer? Yes. Is it a whole number? Yes. Is it a natural number? Yes. So it is all of the possibilities, except for irrational. How do I know that? Well, remember the first slide that we had? Oh, see, that's what happens when you leave and go to the restroom. You miss that stuff. So maybe you'll need to look at someone else's notes. Or you can just watch the YouTube video when you get home. Thank you. How about, how about if we classify this? Irrational. That's the only thing we can say about it. 
If it's irrational, it's definitely not going to be an integer, a whole number, or a natural number. Okay? So do you understand that part? Let's do, let's put one decimal number up here just so we're all on the, let's say a negative 2.38. Is it rational or irrational? It's rational. Why is it rational? It's a. It doesn't repeat, but it it terminates. It's a terminating decimal. Is it an integer? It's negative. But just because it's negative doesn't make it an integer. To be an integer, it has to. Be, it's kind of like a whole number that's negative. Okay. No fractions or decimals for integers. So that's all we can say about it. Is it's rational? Okay, next, we are going to compare now. When you compare numbers, you're using greater than, less than, or equal to. And we are going to use our calculators to help us. So what we can do is use a calculator to turn everything into a decimal form. Use calculator to convert all numbers to decimals. On your assignment today, I'm going to be looking for the decimal equivalent of the number. Meaning, when you put it in your calculator and you get the decimal, I want to see at least the first few digits of the decimal part, okay? So, well, it depends on how big it is. Not, don't put any more than like three decimal places, all right? All right, so let's do five and two thirds compared to the square root of 29. All right, so the first thing, let's write five and two thirds as a decimal. Now, I bet a lot of you already have two thirds memorized. Do you know what two thirds is as a decimal? Point, yeah, it's point six repeating, isn't it? So this would be five point six repeating. Now, if you did not know that two thirds was point six repeating, then you could do two divided by three. Remember to turn a fraction into a decimal, it's the top divided by bottom. All right, so let's, excuse me. So let's forget about that for a second and let's do the square root of 29. 5.385. Now, to compare, this is important, when you're comparing decimals, you are looking one place value at a time. So the biggest place value they both have is the ones place, and they're equal in the ones place. But the next place value is called the what? Tenths place. In the tenths place, they are different. So Nothing else matters after the tens place then. We're really just comparing six to three. And hopefully we all know that six is greater than three, which means five and two thirds is greater than the square root of 29. Okay, let's do another one. How about we compare, we'll change colors here negative 3.1 to a negative 16 over 5. Now, this is already written as a decimal, so we don't need to do anything else with that right now. Over here, it's going to be negative, right? So let's not worry about putting a negative in our calculator. But in a calculator, we do top divided by bottom. That's how we turn that into a decimal. Top divided by bottom. What is it? 3.1. 3.2. Now, be, bless you, be extremely careful when you have negatives. You have to think backwards when you have negatives. Remember? So really, if they were positive, 3.1 would be less than 3.2. But since they are negative, Negative 3.1 is greater than negative 3.2. Think about your number line, where they would be at on a number line. 
negative 1 is greater than negative 2 on a number line. All right, the last part of this is going to be not just comparing them, but ordering them. So the only difference with that is that you're going to have more than two numbers that you have to compare, okay? You always want to make sure that you read the directions carefully when you order, because every now and then they're like, order it from greatest to least. Normally it's least to greatest, but every now and then they try to trick you. So we're going to order from least to greatest. That side of the room is getting a little silly. Shh, I, you didn't need to say a word. In fact, you needed to say no, nothing. That was the whole issue. I don't want to hear you right now. That was not like a question. I didn't need comments. I just wanted you to stop talking. All right, so let's do at least one of these. I think one of them would be a, enough. One half, negative two, square root of five, negative seven fourths, and 2.4. Now, one thing that I notice right away is that I have two negatives and three positives. So I know for sure my negatives are smaller than my positives. All right. I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to write everything that's not already a decimal as a decimal. So what would one half be as a decimal? Okay. Negative two is fine. Let's do the square root of five in your calculator. Two point. Okay. Let's do, now this is going to be negative. Let's not worry about the negative sign in your calculator. 7 divided by 4. And this is already a decimal. I'm going to first look at my negative numbers. Okay. Kind of looking at these two first. I need to be careful that I'm thinking backwards for my negatives. Which one of these is the smallest? All right. Now, a lot of people like doing this. They like numbering. So that's going to be my first thing in the list. This is going to be the second thing in the list. We have those taken care of. Now let's look at our positive numbers. What would be the next number in our list from least to greatest then? 0 0.5. And then what? Good. And then this is my biggest one, isn't it? Now, some people like to stop there, or some people order the decimal form. You want to make sure that when you order these and you write your final answer, that it is the original form. Okay? So, again, when I write these down as my answer, I'm going to put negative 2, comma, negative 7 fourths, comma, 1 half, comma, square root of 5, comma, 2.4. That is my final answer. Again, my final answer needs to be in the original way it was written. So a lot of people like doing it with the decimals. Some people don't even like doing that, and they just like having it numbered up there. But that is not completing the problem all the way unless you write it in the original form.